to to return to uh, the world of Lisp for, <laughs> for a brief moment, you uh, at CMU you you uh, wrote a version of Emacs yeah. that that I think was very impactful on the history of Emacs. Uh, what what was your motivation for um, for doing so? At at that time, so that was in like eighty five or eighty six. Um. I had been using Unix for a few years, and um, most of the editing was at this this tool called ED, um, which was sort of an ancestor of VI. And is it, is it a pretty good editor? Not a good editor? Well, if if what you're using, um, if your input device is a teletype, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's certainly more humane than Tico, which was kind of the the common thing in in a lot of um, the deck universe at the time. Tico spelled T K. Is that the no, no. Tico T E C O the text editor and corrector. Corrector. Wow, well, so many features. Um, <laughs> and the original Emacs um, came out as so Emacs stands for Editor Macros. And Tico had a way of writing macros. And so the original um, Emacs from MIT sort of started out as a collection of macros for Tico. But then, you know, you know the, the sort of Emacs style got, got popular originally at, at, at MIT, and then people did a few other implementations of of Emacs that were, you know, the, the the code base was entirely different, but it was sort of the philosophical style of the original Emacs. What was the ph philosophy of Emacs? And by the way, were all the implementations always in C? And then no, and how no. does Lisp fit into the picture? No, so so the very first Emacs was written as a bunch of macros for the Tico text that's, editor. Wow, that's so interesting. And the 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 macro language for Tico was probably the most ridiculously obscure format. You know, if you just look at a Tico program on a on a page, you think it was just random characters. Okay. It really looks like just line noise. So it's kind of like LaTeX or something. Oh, like worse? oh way worse than okay. LaTeX. <laughs> way, way worse than LaTeX. Um, but, you know, if you use Tico a lot, which I did, the, the, the Tico was completely optimized for touch typing mm -hmm. at high speed. Um, so there were no two-character commands. Well, there were a few, but m mostly they were just one character. So every character on the keyboard was a separate command. Um, and actually every character on the keyboard was usually two or three com commands because, you know, you could hit shift and control and all of those things. You know, it's just a way of very tightly encoding it. And mostly what Emacs did was it made that that visual, right? So... Uh, one way to think of Tico is use Emacs with your eyes closed, uh -huh. um, <laughs> where you have to maintain a mental model of, you know, sort of a mental image of your document. You have to go, okay, so the the cursor is between the A and the E, and I want to exchange those, so I do these these things, right? So. It, it it almost it, it is almost exactly the Emacs command set. Well, it's roughly approximate, roughly the same as the Emacs command set, but using Emacs with your eyes closed. Right. Um, so what Emacs, you know, part of what Emacs added to the whole thing was was being able to visually see what you were editing um, in a form that matched your document. Um, and you know, a lot of things changed in the, in the command set. It, it, um, you know, because it was programmable, it was really flexible. You could add new commands for all kinds of things. And then P 
people rewrote Emacs like multiple times in Lisp. There was one done at MIT for the Lisp machine. There was one done for Multics. And one summer I got a got a summer job to work on the Pascal compiler for Multics. And that was actually the first time I used Emacs. And 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 so um, to write the compiler. So you've worked on compilers too. It's yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah. So I did a lot of work. Uh, you know, I mean, I spent like like a really intense three months working on this Pascal compiler, um, basically living in Emacs, and it was it was the one written in MacLisp by Bernie Greenberg, and I thought, wow, this is a just a way better way to do editing. Um, and then I got back to CMU where we had kind of one of everything and two of a bunch of things and four of a few things. And um, since I mostly worked in the Unix universe and Unix didn't have an Emacs, I decided that I needed to fix that problem. Uh -huh. So I so I wrote this this implementation of Emacs in C because at the time C was really the only language that worked on on um, on Unix on Unix um, and you were comfortable with C as well. Oh yeah, at that point. Yeah, at that time I had done a lot of C C coding. That this was in like eighty six, um, and you know it was running well enough to. Be used, for me to use it to edit itself within a month or two. And um, then it kind of took over the university. And and, and it spread and outside. Then it, yeah, and then it went outside. the, And largely because Unix kind of took over the research community on the, on the, on the ARPANET. Then, and Emacs was... It was kind of the best editor out there. It kind of took over, and there was a, actually a brief period where um, I actually had login IDs on every non-military host on the on the ARPANET. <laughs> you know, because people would say, "Oh, can we install this?" and and I'd like, "Well, <laughs> yeah, but you'll need some help." <laughs> Ah, uh, the days when security wasn't uh, when nobody cared. Nobody cared. Yeah, 